Hello YouTube, today we're going to discuss the technical rating for lifts. And what I mean by that is the amount of practice that will be necessary not only to master the lift, but also to keep the level of mastery at a high level. The reason why this is an important concept is because for a lot of lifts, you're going to find that as bodybuilders, we want to keep the level of mastery high. The reason for that is because it keeps the, the neurological patterns very effective. That way, we can actually know that when we progress in strength, we're actually progressing in muscle. An argument that a lot of people use when they say that progressive overload is not a good way to know if the muscle is actually being hypertrophied or not, is that you can be in a novice phase, you can be in a learning phase, meaning that what's really being improved, it's your ability to do the lift. It's not necessarily the muscles, meaning that your technicality, and your ability to move through space with the weight is what's improving. So it's really a skill. It's not muscular. And that's a very decent argument and rebuttal. The issue is that those adaptations don't really happen in a, a time span that represents years. It's usually a period of time that could be a learning phase, but past the learning phase, the adaptation stops, meaning that you are proficient at the lift. You are now effective at that movement. So any amount of strength you're going to gain from that, unless you really tweak your form or do a completely different style, is going to be from muscle gain. And that is key because as bodybuilders, we want to know that we're progressing, right? So that's the key idea behind that video, is that this concept needs to be understood because if it's not, you're going to be all over the place in terms of progression. If you constantly have to relearn lift, like some people do and they rotate lifts all the time, you're not really making progress. I will make a video about that because in a, in a sense, it's a form of tonnage, but it has a specific quality to it. I'm going to detail that in the hypertrophy series. But for now, I want to talk about that mastery level because I just established the fact that bodybuilders need to be really high at all times, which in, also includes the idea that you want to maintain a high frequency of training so that you repeat the movement several times a week, or at least the movement patterns, not necessarily the right movement, but movements that resemble it in terms of specificity. And you want to keep it above a certain level at all times. And you're going to run into certain issues. First off, for frequency, because some people will tell you it's not possible. It is if you do variations and rotations effectively. And I made videos about that. But there are certain lifts where I would agree, meaning that there are certain lifts that require so much work so frequently at such a high intensity that they really cannot be maintained. And the question would then be, should you include them in your program? And I would say yes, but sparsely. You want to only pick a select few because if you pick 15 of them, you understand that you're never going to be able to keep track. And the argument is mostly based around certain examples that I've noticed. For example, Olympic weightlifters, if you look at their program, yes, they do squats, yes, they do deadlifts, but the, the bread, the heart of the program is going to be snatch and it's going to be clean and press, clean and jerk. Why? Because that's what they need to be good at. So they need to practice it all the time. When you look at the amount of frequency these guys do, they put most bench bros to shame. They do those movements all the time. They do variations all the time because they have to. And the reason why they have to and they can't just do them once a week is because the level of technicality to reach a high level of mastery on these lifts is extremely high because the technical ceiling is high. And as you understand, the higher the technical ceiling, the higher you have to go in levels of mastery to reach it. And for the most part, the more you are going to lose that level of mastery if you don't practice it. So when you think about the lifts in your program, you need to have that in mind because you're going to have certain lifts that you're going to be able to mistreat a little bit. For example, curls. Curls are low in terms of technical rating because they're very easy to understand. And the good thing also is that the movement pattern and the neurological adaptation needed for it is not great, meaning that you are not only going to be a master of curls really fast, but you're also going to be able to maintain that level of mastery without really practicing curls. And that's my personal opinion, but in terms of movement patterns that are like this, you have things that are like this, meaning that lateral raises, wrist curls, all of the stuff that people are going to consider fluff. 
In reality, it's because they are isolation movements, and because they are single jointed movements for the for the most part, they are much easier to retain. You also understand that by that logic, any movement that is multi jointed is going to be much tougher. So that's your benches, your squats, your deadlifts. If you only squat once a month you are relearning the squat every time you want, every, every single time you squat. Same for the deadlift, for the bench. And then you also have the aspect of hypertrophy that come in, comes into play because, for example, for the bench, some people might be able to maintain and retain form and mastery for a long time, but they'll find that if they don't do high frequency on the bench, they lose a ton of strength. Have they lost technicality? Yes, you could argue that is the case. I would argue, however, that because it's so hard to progress on the bench, by virtue of a vicious retribution, it's also very easy to regress on it. And the deadlift is the opposite, in my opinion. The deadlift can be low frequency because it's much harder to regress on it because it's so easy to put uh, weight on it because you use so many muscles at once. And the key example of that is the overhead press, right? You stop overhead pressing for a month, get back into that bar and tell me how much you press, you're going to cry because you lost so much strength. So that's when it comes to your lifting selection, very important to get. Because it means that the lifts that need to be practiced more are going to have to appear in the program for the most part under their original form. So you will have to do them in their conventional style. And you're going to have more variations for these type of movements. The great thing is, again, everything works together and, and nature knows what it's doing. Because these are compound movements, you can easily apply variations to them to feed the technical aspect of it. Plus, they are going to be what needs to be focused on in the program because they drive tonnage. So it makes much more sense that they would have more frequency and variations, whereas isolation movements have less variations and can be trained less frequently. It doesn't mean that you never train isolation, but you don't have to train them as frequently because of that technical rating. So now that the technical rating has been established, I told you the ones at the bottom of the barrel, which, by the way, uh, uh, bodyweight movements tend to be also bottom of the barrel, meaning that you won't lose as much strength on pull-ups and push-ups. But, in a sense, because they're so easy to recover from, they're different because you should be doing them high frequency because you can. Then you have the middle, which are the compound movements, and there's a difference, you know, in between the compounds. And then you have the top. So the top would be, for example, as I said, the snatch. It's the reason why, and I'll make it a full video about it, I do not recommend bodybuilders use Olympic weightlifting movements. You can use variations of them that are going to lower the technical rating via blocks, via partials, but don't do a full snatch as a bodybuilder. Don't do a full clean and jerk. These are hours and hours that you're going to have to invest in that aspect of mastery to get the technical rating high enough to even be able to get hypertrophic benefits from it. Because, and that's also the flip side of this entire thing, the entire idea of the technical rating is also that to be able to start progressively overloading and actually targeting the muscles and not just your brain's capacity to build and learn, you're going to have to reach that, that mastery. How much time is it going to take you? How much sacrifice on the side you're going to have to make? How many lifts you're not going to be able to do as you learn those things? There is a reason why Olympic weightlifters don't do curls. It's not necessarily that they don't want big biceps, they don't have time in their program. Same for powerlifters, why do they only do the big three? They don't really have a choice, they need to, because they need to maintain that mastery at all times and push it forward, because they want to be the best at it. And so for you, bodybuilder, that means making choices, because every single time you pick a lift, that is going to require you to take a lot of time to learn it, and then take a lot of time to maintain it, it means time that you're going to have to spend on it. Time that is not spent somewhere else, that time can, that could represent a loss of tonnage. So it, they, are, they need to be very low. And a good example of that is the front squat. I front squat, I front squat for years, I love front squat. If I could go back in time, I would tell the me of the past to not do it. Reason is, they took me so long to master. Now I'm good with them but the learning curve was intense. And the thing is, they are so easy to lose. Not necessarily in terms of strength, but in terms of technique, that thoracic extension, if I don't train it for a week, I lose it. Meaning that I lose a lot of weight on the bar. And the problem with this is, it means that I have to do front squats every week, but I also have to do a front squat variation every week, sometimes two. So I had to put them in my program. 
I didn't want to, but I've invested so much time in front squats and I'm good at them now that I don't really want to lose all of that technical mastery I accumulated. But I'm sort of a prisoner of my own program now. And I keep doing them just because I love the movement, but I would tell you that they are not necessary. And no technical lift is necessary, meaning that you can really do well with the, the middle ground here. If you have an aspiration because a lift really inspires you, by all means do it, but understand it's an investment. And keep in mind that for me, it's only the front squat. That's the only elite, quote unquote, lift I do. And by the way, I say that because I do it properly, meaning that I do the, the grip, you know, I do the front rack. If you do it with your arms like this or with an SSB, it's different. It lowers the technical rating, so it's okay. But lifts that are going to be like this include the Olympic lifts. It includes also rings. If you want to be able to do those crazy tricks on the rings, guess what? You're going to have to sacrifice on the side. You're going to have to sacrifice your leg size. You're going to have to, have to sacrifice your tonnage because you're going to live on those rings, which also is going to be that conclusion of the video, which is don't hesitate to let the technical rating get lower by making the variation easier. For something like the rings, you don't need to do those crazy flips and be in a full planche for them to be effective. You can do the easy variations that are still going to yield good hypertrophic benefits and the technical rating is going to be low enough that you're not going to have to spend every single day of your life doing them. So that's pretty much the end word here. That technical rating is, yes, sometimes an absolute for certain lifts like the snatch, but for other lifts, you can actually modify it. And by modifying it, you're going to make it much easier on yourself to apply these lifts to your training. So that's up to you. But always keep this thing in mind because if you invest so much time in the lift to get good at it, understand that now it's your responsibility to stay good at it or else you, lose, you are going to just lose all of the investment. And if you don't practice it, yeah, you're going to start to slowly de-learn. And at some point, you're going to have to relearn from scratch. And it's like biking. It's easier to relearn, but this is wasted time. And as a bodybuilder, wasted time is wasted tonnage and wasted tonnage is a loss of muscle. So I'm going to leave you with that. I'm going to make a full video about front squats, about deadlifts, about all of those lifts I detailed here. But that was an introduction because I'm going to start using the uh, concept of technical rating much more in my videos. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.